I don't know where to start this. It's hard to really put into words just how shocking this event has come off to me. I guess the best place to start would be to explain what happened. When I was around 10 years old, I had a loving dog named Jacko. He was a husky and we would go for walks almost every day. One day, however, his rope snapped. He must have seen a squirrel or another small animal and he ran off into the woods to chase it. I remember running home in hysterics and explaining what happened to my dad. He yelled at me, but eventually he went out to his truck and went out to find him. He was gone for around five hours, and when he came back I could tell from his red face and his angered expression he hadn't found Jacko. Even though I could tell he wasn't coming home, I attempted to ask him if he found my loving dog. Dad, did you find Jack? I was immediately slapped in the face and sent off to my room to bed. I was crying into my pillow all night. Jacko was an amazing dog. I had never loved anything more until the night he ran off. I remember his bright red collar with brass pendant labeled J-O. It had a little dog paw print above his initials. Fast forward to now. I am 55 years old and have been working as a dentist for the past 21 years. I was going outside to collect the mail when I heard the sound of barks and twigs snapping. That was when I remembered Jacko. God, it has been so long since I thought of him. My heart was aching as I went inside to read through my mail. I spoke to myself as I went through them. Bill, Bill, and more bills. Finally, the last envelope revealed itself. The paper was tinted yellow clearly signifying how old it was. It had an old red wax stamp that had been burdened with time. It was slightly chipped. I read the date on the envelope. 1978. I was confused. I decided to open it, and to my amazement, it was a letter from my grandpa. My grandpa had died long ago when I was around 17. When I read the letter, each sentence made me feel like crying. More and more. Hey, Felix. I'm really sorry about Jacko. He was a good boy. I'm sure he'll come back to you someday. He's probably out there chasing squirrels. I hope this letter reaches you and doesn't get stuck in processing or any of that shit. Sincerely, Gramps. That last sentence broke the somber mood as I chuckled to myself. The irony of the situation lightened by day as I started to get ready for work. I checked my phone. 6.34 a.m. I had work in about a half an hour, so I went and got some coffee ready while I went into my bedroom. As I walked into my room, I was greeted with a sight that made me feel at home. My bedroom reminded me of my childhood. The old ugly wallpaper, the yellow stained tiles, and the amazing smell of mustiness greeted me like a warm embrace. I was happy here. As I was getting ready, I heard more barking. I recognized it. I couldn't pinpoint exactly, but something about it was familiar. As I finally walked out of my bedroom, I stopped in my tracks. I realized what it was I recognized about that sound. It was Jacko. It was the same high-pitched mellow bark that I recognized from my childhood. I immediately rushed out my door. I ran to the back of the house. I frantically rounded the corner to see my childhood best friend laying in the dirt. Immediately, two details popped into my head which made me go from happy to confused. I had moved around 700 miles away from my childhood home. And two, when Jacko ran off, he was around five years old. Dogs don't live that long. I thought maybe this was a different dog that sounded and looked like Jacko. That thought was immediately disproven as I noticed. A bright red collar and a brass pendant around his neck. I ran up to him and he didn't even seem phased. He started to groan as I looked at the pendant. The initials read J-O. My hands were shaking so violently it looked like I was having a seizure. I immediately embraced my long lost best friend but something felt wrong. He was way too cold even for this early morning weather. I sort of flinched, but I didn't care. 
I hugged him so tightly I felt my body ache. Finally, I got up and led him inside. He moved strangely, almost like he was drunk. I chalked this up to his extremely old age, but I noticed how the collar seemed pristine. I immediately called him to work and explained how I wasn't going to make it in because I wasn't feeling good. As I stood there on the phone, I noticed how my dog kept on bumping into things. I again thought it was old age. I couldn't believe I had found Jacko after all these years. The sleepless nights I endured over his disappearance. I couldn't help but tear up as I hugged him. That's when I noticed it. Jacko's eyes had turned into a brown color. I very vividly remember him having sapphire blue eyes. In fact, it was such a prominent feature that we nicknamed him Bluey at times. I was shocked. I didn't know how to react. My emotions were a mixture of curiosity, confusion, and fear. I sort of just stared at him as I analyzed his face. Everything about it seemed crooked. It was like he had been slowly morphed. I noticed patches of dark fur I hadn't before. His snout seemed more jagged, but the biggest detail was the teeth. They seemed far too sharp and narrow for a dog. I hadn't even seen these in wolves. I sort of pondered as I went to get him food and water. Everything raced through my mind at once. Thoughts like, that is not your dog, or how did he get here? I was so confused. I felt almost dazed as I brought the dishes of foul-smelling dog food and tap water to Jacko. I set it down and I watched as his previously sloppy demeanor changed into a fast-focused strut. He elegantly waltzed over to his meal and proceeded to devour it within seconds. Must be hungry, huh, Jacko? I said sarcastically. That joking mood changed into a serious one as he glanced from his food and stared right at me. He was looking into my eyes as I glared at him. As odd as this sounds, his eyes seemed human. I can't properly put into words. I looked at him, but right as I was about to look away, he groaned at me. Now I swear to you guys, I heard the word help come from that groan. It was like a whisper traveling in the room. I immediately fell sick as I backed away. I don't understand why I decided to do what I did next. But alas, some people make mistakes in a moment of quick thought. I decided to keep Jacko with me. I thought, all of this is just stress. None of this is serious. You probably just heard something. I really had no clue what was about to happen. Because I didn't have to work that afternoon, I decided that finishing up my basement would be a good idea. I had been working on this thing for over five months, and it was the perfect man cave. Hardwood floors, a massive TV, it felt like a perfect hangout place for someone like me. I even had a vintage Atari sitting there to relive my childhood passions. As I slowly crept down the steps, each creak, groan, and crack was making me feel nervous. I was still quite shaken up from Jacko's sudden appearance as I had to think for a good minute about what to do. You obviously can't just take in an enormous husky after years and years of not owning a dog. I started to remember how long it had been since I'd last seen him. 1978. That was simply not possible. If it was 2023 now, that means Jacko would be 50 years old. I started to think, what if this was a completely different dog I just brought in? What if he's completely rabid? I started to worry as I shifted damp cardboard boxes in the basement. Each shift made me sort of flinch as I heard the familiar sounds of paws stomping on hard wood. I listened as Jacko slowly walked down those wooden stairs. I slowly turned around to see him. His tongue was hanging out. I saw black viscous liquid on his tongue and I almost gagged. The room was filling up with a very pungent odor. Think of roadkill that's been left to rot in the summer. I started to gag even harder as I watched Jacko take very slow steps toward me. It reminded me of a wolf, silently approaching its prey. Then I saw his collar, and all previous thoughts of this being a different dog were wiped away. In awe, I watched as he drove me into a corner. Jacko? Calm down, boy. It's me, Felix. 
I watched as he perked his head to the side. His ears twitched. That's good, boy. Every word I spoke felt like a challenge. It was actually hard to think. I was so worried about him going crazy, I didn't even notice the silence. There was no more birds fluttering or calling. No more insects or bees. Hell, not even the wind was swaying. There were no more birds fluttering or calling. No more insects or bees. Hell, not even wind was swaying. I felt hopeless. I don't know why I dismissed the smell or the black liquid that was on my once beloved dog's tongue. I was just worried about being bitten. I outstretched my hand after a bout of thought and began to slowly stroke him. Even though he was clearly old and had been outside for decades, his fur still felt the same. It was incredibly smooth. It felt like silk was caressing my hand. I watched as he began to calm down. I finally walked past him and led him up the stairs. I was contemplating calling a vet. After a few minutes of thinking, I decided that was for the best. Hell, what if Jacko had rabies and he bit me? I shook the thoughts off and rang up our local vet. After a few minutes of discussing, we decided on an appointment for tomorrow. I sighed. Even a day with Jacko felt like torture. I was actually surprised, after so many years of missing and begging for my doc to come back. I was now contemplating making him go away. Eventually it fell dark, and the feeling of tiredness swiftly overtook me. I got ready for bed and decided to check up on Jacko before I went to sleep. As I quietly tiptoed down the stairs, each slow step making me feel more on edge. That's when I heard a very distinct sound. It was like something wet, slapping a hard surface. I could hear the echoes. It was coming from my basement. I felt a sense of dread pit deep in my stomach as I slowly rummaged to find the door to my basement. I noticed something. The door was wide open. I very slowly began to make my way down the stairs. Every hair on my body started to stand up as I made it halfway down. It was so cold, I felt my body begin to shake violently as the sound got louder and louder. It was reducing my mind to rubble as I finally made it down. What stood in the corner of my basement will forever haunt me as I lose my memories. Jacko stood there silently on his hind legs. He had something in his mouth. The moon illuminated him through the basement window and it revealed blood dripping from his teeth. Finally, I realized what it was. It was the collar of my dog that had been ripped off of him and still had clumps of fur in parts of his neck. It had blood staining it. I then immediately looked at this thing's neck to come to a horrible realization. That same collar was on its neck. This was not my dog that stood before me. I let out a yelp and silence washed over. My mind felt frozen as this thing turned around to see me. Its face was so horribly mangled, I could see little bits of mange littering its face like spouts of paint. Its eyes, they were black. I could see my own reflection in them like they were a mirror. Then I watched as it dropped the collar of my now presumably dead dog as it approached me slowly. It walked like a human. I finally found the courage to get away, and I ran. As I made it up and out the door, that thing chased after me. It slammed into my glass sliding door, making it shatter. It let out a horrible yell. It stood between me and the only place I could now use as an escape. I did the only thing I could think of, and I ran up the stairs and went into my room. I slammed the door shut and locked it as I began to barricade myself with any loose furniture I could get my hands on. I ran over to my phone and began to dial 911. The feeling of hopelessness and sorrow only slightly fading away as the feeling of another person speaking to me came from the other line. 911, what's your emergency? I felt relief as I answered. Listen, my dog has gone fucking crazy. I'm in my room right now and I'm trying to keep it away. It's somewhere in my house and I don't know where. Just please send help. I heard the sound of shuffling on the other line 
then a response. All right, sir. Make sure to stay on the line and keep out of sight, okay? Everything will be all right. What's your address, please? The sound of horrible screams and rummaging began to litter the air like a pathogen as I continued on. Uh, 178 Mangrove Drive. Please send help. I, I don't know how much long I could bear this. That's when I looked out the window. I saw the face of my dog looking at me. I lost breath almost immediately. Its face began to warp into a human. Its skin was white. It began to smile at me. How was it this tall? Oh my god. My dog is looking at me. It wants to kill me. Please. Sit and help. Oh my fucking god. I said to the operator as it began to stare at this thing. It put its unnaturally slender hand up to its mouth and made a gesture of silence. I screamed, but that didn't last as long as I felt the elevating sounds of this thing's horrible chuckling. I felt so alone. It kept on looking at me with this horrible grin. Its smile was so large that it stretched beyond my window. Then it showed me something that has me crying while I write this. I watched in terror as its hand reached down and pulled something off the ground. It began to pull up a gray fur-covered body. It was Jacko. I could see the red collar on his decapitated body. I began to cry manically. Why was this happening? Was this all a dream? Sir, we are two minutes away. Hang in there. The voice on the line echoed. As a feeling of hope began to fill my body, that quickly faded as this thing began to put its hand to my window. I watched as it began to feel around before finally pulling it open. The squealing of the window finally reaching the top began to make me sob. I was ready to accept death. It took the body of my mangled dog and threw it into the room. It landed at my feet, blood pulling the carpet, making it look like red wine had spilled everywhere. I began to embrace my long-gone friend in my lap as I watched that thing smile at me. I heard its stomps as it began to walk away. I did not care for my life anymore as I sat there crying and hugging my dead best friend. <laughs> Jacko, no. I quietly uttered as I held him to my lap. I heard the faded sounds of sirens begin to approach as I sat with Jacko. The rest of it is a blur. I woke up in the hospital. I don't know how, but I had cuts littering my body. I thought it was from me hurrying to barricade my door or the glass from the initial impact of that fucking thing slamming into my door. It's been two days now. I'm still in the hospital. I don't know what's happening. My house is being investigated on. I might be sent to jail under suspicion of animal abuse and neglect, but I'm not so sure. I love you, Jacko. I wish you never ran off.